Hi, this is Elizabeth from Friends of Motion and today I am very excited to show you how to make these flowing organic gradients in Cinema 4D and Redshift by using vertex colors and letters. I'm also going to do this in Cinema 4D 2023 and the reason for that is that we have a new feature that is very exciting and it's the fact that we don't need to convert the text into an editable object anymore. We can keep it procedural. And if you're anything like me, you always get a little nervous to make anything editable because you know the client will come back and change something. So with that said, this is a very simple setup with a floor, an area light, a camera. And the floor does have this rough plaster that comes with Cinema 4D uh, Redshift materials. I also have a text object that's extruded. It's very important to also make your text regular grid. So it will be an end gone when you create it. Make sure it's a regular grid. And uh, if you want to know how I set this up, I will also link the pre my previous video where I have a little bit more in depth of my render settings and just a simple a stage setup. So with that, let's jump in. Let's close my render view because I'm first just going to set it up. I am going to start with the vertex color field. So if you haven't used this, it's just one of my favorite things is the vertex color field. I'm going to right click, press on other tags and then vertex color instead of vertex map. I think a lot of people know about the vertex map, but I haven't seen a lot of people using the vertex color, which is just amazing. And in the vertex color map, I'm just first going to show you how it looks and how it works. So you need to use a spherical field. And one thing that I realized, and I think maybe it's a R23 thing, oh, sorry, R2023 20, bug, or maybe it's just me, but usually I have to save first before you see anything. Right, right. So I saved, now I can see something's happening. And it's basically using the sphere to tell the, the view, the, to tell the geometry where to change color. And the reason it's changing color is because you can remap or you can color map where the, the field is. So right now it was this pink and I'm just going to change it to a gradient so you can see the, what happens. I'm going to load a preset and I'm just going to use this heat map. And you can see how it just, you know, automatically pick up the, the fall off of the, the sphere to map the color gradient. Now that's cool and all, but we want to be even cooler. So we are going to use um, an emitter. And the, and the reason for that is that we can have multiple layers of colors overlaying and um, organically moving. And in that way, it almost have this uh, painterly glow effect that's just really stunning. So to get that, we are going to use an emitter. We're actually going to use a few emitters, but let's start with the first one. This one is going to be red one. And then we just put it in a folder. RT this. Okay. My particles are going to be in there. And this one is going to be red. My emitter, let me just get my settings, 100. This was 50 in Y, 100 in X. In the particle itself was 500 viewport, 500 Earth. The speed is 12, I think. And just see I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees just so it can go down a little nice I know it's very slow but we also want to create a a, 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 a force my favorite force turbulence and the turbulence is going to strength will be 12 scale 100 and it should already show quite a nice wave. Yeah, and this part, you will probably spend some time tweaking and that's usually what happens when it comes to 
particles and simulations, but uh, for now, this should be good enough. And let's make it work with, let me just save and refresh again. As you see, there's like that little ghost sphere that's not supposed to be there. All right, so in the fields, you'll see that vertex color tags have fields and I'm just going to drag this emitter in the fields and I'm going to say particle object. And for the particle, you'll see that very faintly, you'll see something, but you actually have to change it here in the color remap. So let's say gradient. Now you can already see a big difference and I am going to change the, I'm going to load a preset and then this heat map. Let's just take some of the color out and make this yellow a little oranger just because I don't want it to be too hot and just move it around. It should always be black on the end. Let me show you. If I make it white, if I make it green or something else, you'll see the whole letter is green. So this black represents the ends of the side of the particle. Um, and then on the radius, this should be like around three or four, just so it's tiny. Let me play. Nice. Maybe a little bigger, five. Okay, so now we have the red one. Now I want the blue one. And I am actually just going to duplicate, duplicate this one and call it blue. And let's move it to somewhere else so that it doesn't do this exact same thing as the other ones. Oopsie. Hm. Let's go back and do that. Right. Nice. And we also want to add this to our vertex color. So remember we had the red one. Now we're going to do the blue one. Here we go. Particle object and blue. I'm just going to remap it to be color remap, gradient. And for now, I'm just going to change this to blue. And maybe another extra color. And we can we can tweak it later too, but just so we have something. What is this spherical thing doing here? Blue, green, and this black, very small, and then back to that layer inside the blue that should be around four, just so that that particle is smaller. That. And as you can see, you don't see the red anymore. So the blue completely override the red. And the reason for that is, is because it's like Photoshop layers. You have to have a way to see down through to the bottom layer. And so this needs to be on a screen or overlay or a mat or something that will show the bottom one. And I find max is usually the best. Let me play it. Nice. And let me just, just blue one. Since it's blue, I just want to, the spherical field can delete. Blue should be blue. Let's just make it that kind of blue. Nice. And now for that beautiful long streaks to create that. And that is one of my favorite fields in <laughs> my favorite tag so that is called freeze and you put it at the bottom and you put it at on average in the layer and you say auto update and then you put it around three and then make sure red is also on max because you want to see through to the bottom and look at that that is just so nice so painterly and you can, this is just a few clicks. You can imagine what you can do if you really massage these pixels by tweaking and adding and 
And because this is a like a Photoshop layers, you can just add and add and add. You can even put things in folders and you know make it organized and yeah, it's just really cool. I love it. All right, so I think we're now ready to go to Redshift and tell Redshift what to do because also because there is no texture on the text. We are going to start with a Redshift material, standard material. Adding that on and double click. And we are going to add a vertex attribute. I'm just going to click on this plus and start typing vertex attribute. And it's basically telling the color to become the color of the vertex color. So we're adding the color in here. And this color tag, we drag straight into the attribute name. I don't know why this is pink, but I like it to be black. Let's just make it black. And one thing, I really don't like this shininess. So let's move that roughness all the way to the end. Yeah. So I also want the color to glow. That's very easy. You just add this out color also to the emissive color. So emission color and nothing will happen because you have to also, oopsie, you also have to go to the emission and give it a one, two, whatever, but one is good enough. Look how nice that looks. And while we are at um, glowiness, let's just quickly look at the render settings because you might not see a nice glow and very important thing you need to do is put on your global illumination. And I like just brute force, brute force, four and 16. I'll quickly go just tab through these. You can pause your screen and just see if it's more or less like mine. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the render settings. I've done one where uh, my previous videos that goes a little bit more into detail, but uh, just so you know, I would say global illumination is the most important. Uh, I did try with caustics. It looks beautiful in caustics, but that's almost another tutorial because there's a few other check boxes you have to check to add the caustics. And then um, all the other settings are normal. All right, so this is already pretty cool looking. And I would say this is level one. And now we're going to go a few levels up and do a mix material so that you can see the glass coming through the back, through the, through the letters. And for that, it's a very little, again, of a cheat. But I just find these glass in, I found these glass in the uh, content browser. You just double click. I've done this before too with my other videos. Just a quick cheat where you just copy the glass, control C, and double click on the standard material and control V. Now that glass is in here. And let's just organize again. We're going to delete the output. We don't need that. I'm going to call this glass because we're going to get confused. I'm going to call this color glows. Nice. And what's going to happen is we want the glass to be masked. No, actually, we want the color to be masked out from the glass. So we have a glass and where the mask is is where the color glows are going to show. And we're going to use the vertex map use that and it's a very easy thing you just use a material blender not blender layer the blender does similar things but this is the easiest one and i want to add the color to the the base the, uh, sorry the gloss is the base color and the glows is going to be the layer two uh layer one sorry and just unplug that and plug that in that and we need a mask and the mask is this vertex attribute the same one so so easy if you want to change the vertex at the color vertex everything will ripple through the whole system so you don't need to redo anything so you add it there mask it's going to mask out the glass to reveal the color and let's hope it works. Yes, it works. All right. So one thing 
it it all of a sudden is not as bright as I want it to be. And there's two things you can do. The one is obviously just crank up the emission. And that might be good enough for you. Let me just show you what it looks like. This up to two. The other thing is to crank up the mask. So as you know, the mask is actually not a black and white mask because you are using the, the vertex. So this, that's the mask, which is not ideal because the mask is usually, as you know, in Photoshop, black and white. So what I did, and it worked pretty well, is just do a color correct on this. Correct. Just put it in between before you plug it into the mask. Let me just first show you how it looks. So I took the saturation down and then I cranked the contrast a little up so that it's a real pure maybe down and the gamma could also go a little up so it's a nice clean there's a pure white pure blacks and enough detail still so you don't want to completely crank it too much just enough to show the colors way brighter so let's put it back into my mask there we go and plug that back into the surface and there we have it that is so pretty and I know I'm not going to be able to scrub through and that is the last thing we are going to cache the or bake the emitters which is very important because you don't want any surprises in your renders and if you don't bake this it will have weirdness weirdness renders all right so we're gonna do we click on the emitter and you go con shift c to look for it and press bake I already have it open bake particles and you just say okay it should take literally a few seconds same with the other one shift c find type in bake particles a few seconds and there it is so now let's see we can totally scrub and it's wonderful and that, that's it. And let me just show you the proof in the pudding, of course, is typing a new word because the client came and they want to try. Client came and they want to localize it, change it to another word. I know it looks weird, but if you just go back, you save and you scrub and it does. Let me just, uh, it should magically update. Let's see. Let me refresh. And there we go. We have Ola. If there's anything you would like to know or any comments, uh, please let me know. I always find it it's hard if you're a beginner or just start off to splurge on expensive plugins like X Particles. And I'm trying to make these tutorials so that anybody with just the basic cinema 4D can still make beautiful things and um, start their career or just start their hobby. All right. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.